Is your phone's battery life degrading quickly? Your phone used to last over a day on full charge, but now it won't last even for half a day. One asks you to fully discharge before charging, while another asks you to charge frequently. Not sure what's the right way. Don't worry, we have all been there. This video is a complete guide about smartphone battery health. I'll explain how it works, what causes your battery to degrade quickly, how can you prevent it, how to extend your battery life, and we also break a lot of myths and misconceptions about smartphone batteries. It's gonna be a really useful video, so let's get started. Before we start, what is the worst way to charge your phone? I will reveal it towards the end of the video, but as we discuss some points, it might be apparent for you as well. If you get to know, comment it down. I think the core to understand what is causing your battery to degrade quickly is to understand first how a battery works, specifically how a lithium battery works, because that's what is used in our smartphones. A battery consists of three sections. One called the cathode with lithium atoms and the other side with graphite which can house the lithium atoms. Now, the battery is fully discharged. When you charge it, the electrons from lithium atoms go to anode side while the lithium ions travel through the middle layer called the electrolyte. This is very unstable state for electrons and they naturally want to go to the other side to be stable. So now when you use your phone, electrons will pass through your phone and lithium ions will go back to cathode side through the electrolyte. This is discharging. Simple. That's how a battery charges and discharges. Okay, why does my battery life go down? It used to hold charge for two days. Now it's usable only for half a day. That's because every time you fully discharge and charge your device, some lithium ions are last forever. They chemically form other molecules. So now those lithium ions which used to provide electricity are no longer available to provide anymore. So lower the quantity of lithium ions, lower capacity of the battery and hence fewer hours of charge. This is not due to any external factors at all. You protect your battery in the best possible way, it's still gonna degrade as you charge and discharge. For iPhones, as an example, they are certified to last for at least 500 cycles of charge and still maintain 80% of their battery capacity. A cycle here refers to full charge followed by a full discharge. If you use only till 50% and then charge, then two uses of 50% will be only one cycle. Some are even rated for over 1000 cycles. Most smartphones should display this information in their battery settings page. Second, the stress on battery at extreme charges. As I said before, after fully charging, when all lithium ions and electrons are in anode side, this this is a very unstable state and electrons want to go back to cathode side. So batteries don't like being at 100% charged state. This is true on the other side as well when the battery is at 0%. When it's fully exhausted, the lithium ions convert into other molecules, reducing the battery capacity. Basically, your battery is more stressed when it's at 0 or 100%. Think about it. A dry sponge will easily absorb water. But for an already saturated sponge to absorb more water, it's gonna take extra effort to hold more water. So there is an easy workaround to prolong your battery health. Do not let your phone to be at 0 or 100% state of charge. Only charge till 80% and when it gets close to 20%, charge it up again. This will reduce the stress on the battery and will increase your battery health. There is even a setting on your iPhone where you can set the maximum charge to 80%. This is in the settings, battery settings, battery health and optimization. Okay. When it comes to battery health and preserving the capacity for long duration, there is one factor which is very important, that is heat. This is one killer problem for your phone batteries, literally. If there is one thing that can extend your smartphone battery life, that's heat management. As we saw, the process of charging and discharging a battery is literally lithium ions and electrons moving from one side to another. When the temperature is high, the movements get easier and chemical reactions happen faster. On the other hand, when the battery temperature is cold, movements get slower and reaction gets slower too. This can be a good and a bad thing. For example, if you want to charge your battery faster, a warm battery will charge faster than a cold one because movement of particles will be faster. At the same time, if the battery gets hot on an extended period of time, then the process of aging as we saw before will be also faster. More and more lithium ions will get converted to molecules, hence reducing the total capacity of your battery. When it comes to accelerated battery aging, heat is number one reason for premature degradation. It literally fastens your battery aging. There is an optimal temperature for the best battery performance. So what can cause this heat? No one is putting their phone on fire, right? You see, heat is generated by a lot of other factors. If you run intensive applications on your phone, your phone will become hot which is in a 
enough to degrade your battery quicker. If you put your phone under sun for extended time, that is enough to degrade your batteries. In fact, even charging produces heat. If you use an uncertified charger or wireless charging, that also will produce excessive heat which can damage your phone battery health. Wait, wireless charging reduces battery health? Yes, it does. You see, a wired charge is a very efficient way of power delivery to your phone. All the electricity from the outlet reaches your phone without loss. This itself generates heat internally. But with wireless charges, only small percentage of electricity from the outlet reaches your phone. They are very inefficient and use way more power than a phone charger would. Naturally, this inefficiency generates more heat, which we saw now will age your battery fast. The efficiency and the heat generated varies a lot between phone, charger and other factors. But in an apple to apple comparison, wired charger is better for both your phone and environment than wireless chargers. Okay, why it is better than wireless charging? But what about fast charging? I see phones with 30, 50 or even 100 watt fast charging now. I think you get the point now. Fast charging generates more heat. More heat degrades your battery faster. Simple. But wait. Don't throw away all your fast chargers just yet. Conceptually, a fast charger moves ions and electrons faster, which in turn generates heat. But the latest fast chargers use a lot more technology to maintain that heat to a minimum as much as possible. They have advanced circuitry to throttle and speed up depending on how warm your battery is getting. So certified and well-designed fast chargers are safe to use. This is also the case with good wireless chargers. Even though they are inefficient, modern, tested wireless chargers, Try to maintain optimum temperature to keep your battery safe. Some even come with fans to enable fast charging. Okay, I want to debunk one last misconception. Can you charge your phone frequently? Or should you let it discharge fully before you charge it back? I think you might now know the answer from our earlier discussion. A battery at 0% is stressed and unstable and it will age and degrade your battery life faster than normal. So obviously, do not let it exhaust before charging again. Also, you can charge your phone as many times between 0 to 100%. In fact, charging your battery from 40 to 60% 5 times is better than charging your battery from 0 to 100% once. They don't have any memory of charge. That used to be the case with the old battery tech. But with lithium-ion batteries, you can charge more frequently than you would think. So if you want to take away from this video, here's the thing. Batteries will age naturally and this is unavoidable. Two factors which accelerates battery aging are keeping the battery close to 0 to 100% and heat. So to ensure the best battery aging possible, keep the battery close to 50% and at an optimal temperature. Okay, I want to end this video with a personal opinion on the battery health situation. What I said so far are technical aspects of preserving battery health, best possible ways. Does that mean that you should be paranoid if you don't follow any of those? Should you be modifying your workflow to live between 20 to 80 percent charge, carry a charger to charge at 50 percent periodically? Definitely not. There are two reasons why not to sweat over it too much. One, our phones are already equipped with enough battery tech to maintain battery health as much as possible. Charging will slow down or even stop, your phone will switch off at high temperatures, it will monitor the discharge rates and so much more. So it's already doing a lot of things on our behalf. And we can chill. Second, sometimes convenience trumps over efficiency. A battery life is like a human body. It's gonna age anyway. Eliminating sugar and cheese will increase the lifespan, but that doesn't mean we should never enjoy a treat. If you had been charging at a hot environment like a sunny window site, just move it over to a cooler place. If you were anxiously waiting for your phone charge to drop to 0% before charging, Skip that and charge close to 20 or 30%. If you have an uncertified wireless charger that seems to generate unnecessary heat, replace it with a good certified one. Small and educated changes are sufficient. Oh, that reminds me, what is the worst way to charge your phone? Charging your phone with uncertified wireless charger at 0% under direct hot sun. Okay, hope this was helpful. Please like and share if it was. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.